I'm Joseph, and today I want to talk about game state. Um, normally, when you're kind of building out your game code wise, you have this understanding of like a main game loop. And in there, you have like your update stuff and then your, your, your rendering or your drawing methods that you do. Normally, you do updates first, uh, figure out positions of everything, and then you, you draw all the rectangles and triangles and sprites and stuff like that. Um, but as you start to move further along, you start to have to need to separate your world from like a pause and pause menu and a start menu and um, dealing with GUI stuff and uh, weather system and, and stuff like that, where you want to handle these um, kind of updates and renders uh, kind of in an isolated way where you're not having to look at all the code for all the other stuff, um, but still having ways to control these different states without having it kind of override your entire system. So I have here three states uh, just for demonstration, a pause state, a world state, which is kind of like the sprite walking around, and a profiler state, which is like showing frames per second and, and rendering uh, measurements as well. And then between that state, these states are all they're split up between two different applications. One is, I guess, like the primary state, a primary application that holds in both the profiler in the world, and then uh, the pause application, which holds in the pause state. Um, you can put in the pause state with the same application as everything else, but then you have to figure out how to pause uh, like the world state, but not the pause state. Like, cause, because there's things you're going to want to do uh, there could be a little bit more richer in interactions like of like moving menus between menus and stuff like that that um, it just becomes kind of a hindrance of that so an application can has three primary features it has the ability to do kind of um, a pause which basically stops all updates and then enable disable which stops all updates and renders and then <clears throat> the understanding of time itself so it takes the time per frame and multiplies it against the speed so you can like slow things uh, down or speed things up and i'll demonstrate this all right now so if i go ahead and hit play first i want to show off the like the little profiler here that's in its own state um, i have that in a way that you can enable it or disable it so if i press the letter I, it gets rid of it completely. So it's not doing any renders or any updates. No profiling is happening uh, with the NFRS I again. Then I'll go ahead and re-enable. Um, the other thing uh, is the concept of speed uh, for per application. So here uh, I press up to go faster for my character. And technically that's just in increasing the, the speed. And it's whatever you kind of interacting with the times per frame for that. So my sprite character interact with time per frame to know how fast he should be moving and I can slow it back down to where it gets down to zero so he stops um, and then actually go into a negative value so he starts to go backwards like back in time type of thing okay uh, with that then there's also um, the understanding of pause so um, uh, you can enable and disable an application state, but you can also enable and disable an application altogether, which means it stops all application states within it. So when hit P, it does two things. First, it pauses the update cycles that are happening for the primary um, application that we have. So I, I can no longer get any updates with this. This is still rendering because this is pulling from Raylib's primary uh, function that this does uh, frames per second rendering. So this is all within the render loop. So the game update stuff doesn't happen, but the rendering stuff still happens because it's paused. And then because pause is an application is now enabled, it's also running on top of the primary application that we have set as well. And the keys that would have to move the character around is now able to move around the pause without moving the character around. And uh, if you look at my, uh, my, my player here, let me go back to my player here. Uh, my player has no understanding of it, of a pause at all. There's nothing about if it needs to be paused uh, or anything else like that. And then the actual world state has no understanding of pause either. The actual um, st uh, act primary app state here also has no understanding of pause. So it doesn't know what pause means. It just knows whether it should update or not. And that's abstracted out into the application and the state manager to kind of figure out what it should be doing. Um, let's go back to here. Um, so yeah, that's where uh, that's at. And I can move my pause over here, hit uh, P again to start moving, let me move my character around. And when I put P one more time, I get that pause happening again. So where it was last at. So that that's the whole point of it is to separate out 
uh, these needs and requirements between maybe pausing some application uh, that you have running alongside of that and also being able to kind of enable and disable certain states but also enable and disable the entire uh, application in general that you're kind of coupling all these other states together with um, and then being able to control time a little bit more. Uh, I don't know if zero should technically stop the update cycle at all. I think it would still be useful to have the update still run regardless if time set to zero. I, I can think of like things maybe like uh, networking might be something still useful to have within an application. Um, uh, and yeah, so that's about it. That's about it for understanding kind of how you should be separating out your game state and coupling states together. So let's say, for example, I want a weather system, but I, I really don't care about my sprite at all. I don't need to know where my sprite, my character is moving or how it is completely separate. And each application state here has access to the, the app, uh, to the general application is in so for example my world state can call into app here and then get the profile manager or the state manager and get a different type of state so if i want to see like okay is it raining let me go get my raining state uh that i have there and see if it maybe it's enabled and if it is enabled call some things that raining gives uh, my raining state gives available to me like how much rain is coming down and like how much how slippery should my character be when ro running across the ground or something like that um, so the things kind of be you know more important make sure you're abstracting it out away from your your, your like player characters because they don't really care about uh, the other things that are happening between them other than kind of what state should be interacting with each other um, other than that, yeah, this is the, available with the Raylib PHP library they have. This is going to be my helpers repository. I'll upload my code for that. Uh, so if you want to be able to, to leverage it, you can. And this is kind of like just a buy-in as you want. So for example, here I have my updates and my render separately. It's not like just because you're using the application slash state manager stuff that you're going to be forced out of being able to have your own custom game loop. You can still have that if you want.